Good day to all the spooky kids out there. I am back after a short and much needed hiatus, re-energized and ready to give you more videos on all kinds of fascinating cinema. Last year I did a video on the excellent 1981 film The Entity. In that video I mentioned the existence of a Bollywood remake and today the curiosity of it got the best of me. I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror and this is the 2003 film Hava. Sanjana is a young single mother of two children, who has had to move to an isolated house after her husband left her due to Sanjana making the choice of staying with her sick father instead of moving away together with him, who in outrage responds by leaving his entire family behind him. Sanjana's support network consists only of her brother Vicky and her friend Pooja. In hopes of getting back on her feet, Sanjana moves into a house nearby the woods together with the two children and Vicky. Things are not easy for them, but Sanjana makes things go around by working as a street vendor, selling antiques to tourists and other locals. But sadly, tragedy is not yet done with Sanjana, as there is something evil residing within their new home. An unknown entity starts to attack Sanjana at night, even going so far as to sexually abuse her. Desperate for help, Sanjana tries every avenue to find someone who will believe in her and save her from this outrageously evil spirit, but who will be willing to put the science and logical thoughts aside to believe her? How can you fight against the invisible unknown? Many believe that it is only the Americans who often do remakes of foreign movies, but that's not really true. You can find remakes of popular American movies in Japan, South Korea, Russia, India, basically all over the world. All of them might not be officially licensed and share the same title, but as a viewer, that legality stuff doesn't really matter that much. The filmmakers behind Hava must have been sharing my opinion, as they took the main concept and the most memorable scenes of the entity and used that as inspiration for their own film. I was curious to see how they would handle the more sexual and psychological aspects of the entity in Hava, and surprisingly enough they did not shy away from it. There is no nudity, but the attacks on Sanjana are similar to what Barbara Hershey had to go through in the entity. It's not executed as well, which is kind of hard to do when you're basically redoing scenes that people have already seen before, especially in such a masterfully crafted film like the entity. I found the new creative additions they made to be the most interesting, and those can mostly be seen during the first part and last part of Hava. The house that Sanjana and her family moves into are located out in the spooky woods, which initially gives off a bit of an Evil Dead type of feel to it. They also have to cross a big ass bridge to get there, and it seems like the bridge will have a bigger part in the story than what it ultimately ends up having. After more closely following the events of the entity, Hava again goes in his own way in the final part where it seems to take more inspiration from Poltergeist, with one of Sanjana's children being taken into another ghostly dimension and a paranormal expert coming along to help them. What Hava lacks compared to the Entity is the relationship between Sanjana and her doctor. In the Entity, this relationship plays a huge part as it gives room for exploration of the psychological damage that this ghostly evil is able to do to the poor woman. There is a doctor present in Hava, but it does not feel as important and mostly just serves as a rational, regular doctor with a firm belief in science, which also makes it come across a bit weird when he is the one to bring along this parapsychologist at the end. We are also blessed, I guess? with the appearance of the entity in all of its CGI glory, and it is quite a treat. Speaking of computer visuals, they do pop up every now and then, and most of the times it seems completely unnecessary. The same effects could often be done easier practical, or were just not needed at all. While the story isn't told in a very fast-paced manner, it did keep my attention from start to finish, even with its two hour long running time. There seemed to be some new elements being introduced quite often, making it a bit confusing at times, but since things kept happening on the screen, it ended up being an easy movie to sit through, as even though I have seen the entity several times, I still had no clue where the story would end up going in Hava. 
In my video on the entity, I spend much of my time praising the performance of Barbara Hershey, and taking over a similar role like that would of course not be an easy task with Tava. That part went to the accomplished actress Taboo. My very limited knowledge of her comes from basically reading her very impressive Wikipedia page, and it seems like she is an actress that enjoys the challenge of portraying complex characters, so I can understand the attraction to a project like Hava. Even though I'm going to assume that this was a lower budgeted movie than the majority of her blockbuster hits. Tabu does carry Hava quite well, and I'm not surprised that her career is filled with plenty of praise and awards. But taking all of that into consideration, I do believe that they would have benefited from taking more advantage of her talents by cutting down on the more cliché horror stuff and rather bring up the psychological aspect much, much more. From what I understand, she is also the one who refused to do any nudity in Hava, and again, it wasn't like that was much needed in this film either, so it was probably a smart choice on her part. My knowledge is equally lacking about director Gudu Danoa. My short research tells me I've done most of his work within the action genre, with Hava being his only horror movie to date. And I think that shows in Hava, as just like with a good action flick, stuff constantly kept happening on the screen. That might keep the viewer entertained, but it also takes away from any build up of tension. Hava never gets creepy, scary or anything like that. I also want to note that I read an interview with Danoa that was conducted around the time Hava was released where they denied that the film was inspired at all by the entity, which I found kind of funny, but I also guess it is a way to try to avoid any legal issues that might have occurred if the people that hold the rights to the American film became aware of its existence. Hava came out during a short little horror boom in Bollywood, with successful horror films like Iras and Boot being released around the same time. Hava did not get the same type of response, and the unevenness of the movie shows why. There is some good, fun stuff to be found there, there are no song and dance numbers, the main actress is good, and you can never be quite sure where the story is going, but it is not enough to make this a recommendation. I am not sure if there is a crowd out there waiting to discover Hava, but if any of this does look interesting to you, then sure, give it a go. I'm giving Hava a decent and respectable score of 2.5 out of 5. Have you seen Hava, or any other cool Bollywood horror movies that more people should check out? Let me and others know in the comment section below. This is not the only Bollywood film I've done a video on, although I should really do more, but if you are curious for more of my thoughts on cinema from this wonderful region, then check out my video on A Tank. Subtitled The Bollywood Take on Jaws. Have a lovely day out there in the world, and I will see you next time for more videos on all kinds of weird, unknown movies from all over the world, here on Cinema Terror. Thank you.